Imagine taking a trip down from Seoul to Busan on a bullet train that takes about three hours just to relax and get away and enjoy the beach. But then you find out there's a zombie outbreak in Seoul and then suddenly you turn around and you see a zombie eating a passenger. And you realize, yeah, you're on a train with a zombie with no weapons. Oh crap, there's a zombie outbreak in Seoul? I, I live in Seoul. Hey guys, I gotta go. Take it easy guys. So lately, there's been a lot of hype about the new Korean zombie movie, Train to Pusan. Now this movie's been talked about for weeks coming up to its release, and the zombie movie diehards, they know that Korea doesn't really produce zombie movies at all. But I was surprised when Korea made not just one zombie movie, but two this year in 2016. So with all the marketing hype and word of mouth, does Train to Pusan live up to the hype? Let's find out. Train to Pusan starts off with a divorced dad, played by Gong Yoo named Song Kook, and he's raising his young daughter with his mother in his pretty swanky condo. But Song Kook can be described as just a bloodthirsty fund manager. He just only cares about himself, just, he just cares about the bottom line, money. As you can see during the beginning of the movie, he opens his smartphone, looks at the contacts on his phone, and has a category just for his employees called Lemmings. Now, Saku knows he's a bad father. Every time he goes home to see his daughter, Suan, she's always constantly calling her mother on her smartphone who lives in Pusan. So when her father asks Suan, what do you want for your birthday? Suan says, all I want to do is go to Pusan and see my mom. So after thinking about it, he reluctantly says to his daughter, okay, let's go to Pusan. So the next morning, they wake up really early to go to the KTX train station. And as they hit an intersection, they notice a lot of police cars, fire trucks, and ambulances scrambling to a certain point. And Saku just thinks to himself, oh, why are they going to a, like, a random place this early in the morning? And just thinks nothing of it. But his daughter Suan notices a burning building outside the window, foreshadowing what's going to happen later that day. So to get to the train station, they're like about to board, they're going to enjoy this 2 hour and 50 minute ride from Seoul to Busan, and it should be a nice train ride. However, the last passenger that comes on the train frantically just jumps on and just spazzing and is wigging out as she's just been bit by a zombie. As one of the KTX train member notices this, she scrambles to this woman's aid. But as you guys know in a zombie movie, once a person transforms into a zombie, you know what happens next. Yep, they're gonna bite the next person closest to them. And thus starts the beginning of Train to Busan, a bunch of unknowing people that are about to get hit with a zombie outbreak inside their own train. Now, we can't talk about Train to Busan without talking about its characters, and there's a lot of characters. Um, director Yeon Tan Ho actually made it a point to show everyday people on this train, the variety of people and the walks of life you'll meet on the train like at any given moment. And this film shows it in spades. So in addition to the bloodthirsty fund manager who's rich and powerful, so ooh, we have a sweet daughter who's a total opposite of her dad. This adorable, like innocent and helpful daughter that has really good, kind-hearted, redeeming qualities that are just lacking in her dad. We also have a young couple that's about to have a baby, a baseball team that's traveling to Busan with their manager, a zombie survivor that's actually seen what's going on before the zombie outbreak, the KTX train team, two elderly sisters, and the train conductor that drives the train. Now a big theme that's constantly played throughout this movie is looking out for yourself versus helping others during times of need. And crap definitely hits the fan in this movie when zombies start multiplying and there's attacking from all angles. Another theme that sneaks through the movie is a lower class theme, which is pretty reminiscent in another Korean movie called Snowpiercer, where you have the lower core people on the like one end of the train and you have the rich powerful people on the other end of the train. Moving on to the zombies. Now we can't talk about a zombie movie without, well, the zombies of course. And one of the first things I notice about this movie is they never call the zombies zombies. And I think that's becoming a trend with a lot of these like zombie TV shows and movies. Like for instance, The Walking Dead never calls them zombies, they call them walkers. And in this movie, and they only mention the word zombie once, and that's when this person is looking up zombie on Neighbor, which is the Korean Google. But other than that, you'll never hear the word zombie throughout this entire movie. You won't even hear the word infected. Director Kwok Tae-young deserves special props for this movie at, for doing the zombie makeup and the zombie acting. Also, the zombies in this movie look a lot more human than zombie. The zombies just basically have like their eyes are dilated and they have their veins bulging out. But other than that, they look pretty human. Unlike The Walking Dead where the zombies are full out zombies and, and they pretty much look the part. Another thing about the zombies in this movie is while they can see and hear quite well, they can't smell. As long as they don't notice you're there or like it's dark, they can't see you. And the most frightening thing about the zombies in this movie is that they're really like the ones in 28 Days Later where they run fast and furious. These are like Usain Bolt zombies. They're coming at you like a 400 meter dash. 
just the fact alone that these zombies can like run at you at any time adds suspense to the movie. And while we're speaking about zombies and frightening, props have to be given to special effects director Kwok Tae Young and his team for having so many special effects blend seamlessly throughout the film. Like you'll see windows crashing, you'll see zombies on windows, you'll see zombies like flying at you, you'll see zombies coming from all different angles, and that's just a testament of how well the special effects team did. Now much like the special effects and sound effects in this movie, much love has to be given to the music of this movie. The music has to be given a lot of props. Done by Jong Young Gu, has this fast adrenaline pumping music where you know something bad is about to happen when zombies start running after you, or there's an action scene, or they just have to start fighting the zombies in close quarters. It's just definitely fits the mood of every single zombie encounter in this movie. And when the sad events happen, it just switches to the sad, melancholy, sorrowful music that fits the movie's sad scenes. Another thing I liked about this movie is it's steeped in realism if a zombie outbreak were to happen. For starters, on this train there are no guns. People have to actually have to find other ways to defeat the zombies and look for other weapons. It's not just as easy as like hiding behind a shotgun or a pistol and then like calling it a day. Another thing about the fight scenes is like the close quarters combat. Now since most of the combat happens on the train, you're left wondering like how are these survivors gonna fight these zombies in such close quarters with little room to maneuver? Now let's move on to the actors. The acting is superb in this movie. Led by popular drama and movie the actor Gong Yu, he just plays the blood-sucking fund manager role so well. Like, you can tell he's a douche. You also know when he flips through his smartphone, this guy is loaded and powerful. Like this guy's connections everywhere from like the KTX, like train system, to like the military. This guy just cares about his daughter so much, but he just says screw everyone else during the zombie outbreak. And he really establishes this character persona within the first five minutes of the movie. Another person that plays a really strong role is Ma Dong Sok, who plays the husband of his pregnant wife. Now Sung Hwa also plays a secondary fatherly figure to Suan's character. His character is just a likable person. Like He's like a big buff guy that like, doesn't take crap. He's not just there to fight the zombies, but he's there to like provide moral support. He's there to like show Gong Yu like a conscience. And Sung Hwa plays a nice kind-hearted character that's like, we gotta help everyone. You know, we all survive, we don't survive. And Gong Yu plays that selfish bastard character like, no, it's only me and my daughter that's gonna get out of here. I don't care about any of y'all. He also plays the funny role quite well, is it's really cool to see the chemistry between him and Gong Yu's character throughout the movie. As for Jung Yoong Mi, which, who plays the wife, she plays a really solid role as well. She doesn't really get to talk so much as he, she's pretty much escaping zombies. She does a really admirable role, as well as acting as that second motherly figure to Gong Yu's daughter as well. As for Choi Yu Shik, he plays one of the high school baseball players, and he does a really good job as well, looking out for his baseball team, as well as the female manager, Jin Yi. As a teenage actor, he does a really good job of being brave, but at the same time scared. The next actor is An So Hee, and she plays Jin Hee, the baseball manager. And if you guys are into K-pop, she's actually one of the former members of the original Wonder Girls. She did a really cool transition from being a singer to a full-fledged actress in this movie, showing the concern and showing she has the hots for Gook and saving the best for last. You can see how Kim Soo-an is one of the rising talents in the Korean industry today. She, she plays a really difficult role playing that child actress of this zombie outbreak is happening, what do I do? Like the concernness of playing a young child, but at the same time knowing that she has like good heart qualities and we should help everyone and fighting against her dad saying no this is wrong and she also has the perfect timings when she cries and it's very believable and her performance blew my mind like even topping Gong Yu and Ma Dong Sook's performance and that's saying a lot because those two did a really good job in that buddy buddy role oh now another great aspect with this movie as with all zombie films is you wonder who's gonna die next so you have this big cast of characters and you just know right away not everyone's gonna make it. People will die. But you wonder who's gonna die and how are they gonna die? Will your favorite character die or will they live? So there's three major gripes to have with this movie. One, there's the over-dramatized feel of the movie towards the end where they try to get everyone to start crying and it's way too over-dramatic. I understand you're supposed to be sad during certain parts, but Korean directors have this way of being over-sappy. There's not just like cheese on your kimchi, there's a crap ton of cheese. Like there's just too much cheese in the movie. And another thing is that there's just a major plot hole with the virus's actual origin and outbreak. Like, how did it come about? They, they basically just like sneak it in towards the end of how the outbreak happened, but it wasn't even explained really at all, like to be honest. It was kind of hinted towards, but really, you just kind of like shoehorn that in at the very end to explain the origins of the virus. And I know there's a lot of zombie movies that really don't go into the origin of the zombie outbreak, and that's fine, but at least with a lot of other zombie movies, they actually do give at least like a two to three minute explanation. And when you hear the explanation of how it broke out, you're just not satisfied. Yeah, I don't expect the zombie movie to like spend like 20 minutes of how the zombie outbreak did happen. Although that would be interesting, 
I do expect at least some time, like at least, you know, a couple minutes to, to flesh out the like the finer points of how this happened. And another big gripe I have about this movie is Song Kyung's character played by Jung Yoo Mi. Her character could have been a lot more fleshed out than just simply being the secondary motherly figure to Gong Yoo's daughter. So going back to the question, does this movie live up to the hype? It definitely does. Train to Busan is definitely a worthy addition to the zombie movie genre. And more importantly, Korea actually has a solid zombie horror movie. So if you guys like this film review and want to learn more about Asian movies in depth, please hit the subscribe button. And if you guys want more Asian movie suggestions, please download our free ebook called 108 Asian Movies to Watch. It's in the description in the link below. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.